Okay, I'm gonna finally get to working on this. It's been sitting on the workbench for a long time. Um, I once, I don't remember what it was. I found some videos. I, I did a video on it way back when, and I may actually have to go watch that again just so I remember how to do this. I ordered these probably two years ago, maybe even longer. Um, they're 50 amp rectifiers. Um, just in case what I think happened is it quit working is I think it got flipped to 10 I used to have a piece of tape on here to keep us from flipping it to 10 10 amps But the old one I got in here is only like a 5 amp So I finally ordered these and I'm gonna get around to hooking them up inside you see that and then right here is my old hookup I'm gonna try not to take it off because I think this one looks almost exactly the same it's just bigger um, but I have no idea how to hook it up but if it's got the same markings I'll be good I'm gonna get a zip tie cutter zip tie cutter aka fire snips basically are bypassing all of the computer board and all that kind of stuff so um, when you turn it on it comes on and uh, you know make sure you're not plugged in here that will end your day quick yeah, and it's uh, yeah, not too bad here negative and the only way this one is marked is just a positive and an AC so I assume the AC is the one coming out of the wall and then the positive going to positive so I'll have to go read see if I can find the old schematic on this one because I don't even remember I probably ordered them from Amazon but I'm not sure but hopefully I can look that up and find the wiring diagram for it so I can get this hooked up because I've got this to the two squiggly S's and then the positive and negative coming out of the uh, AC so I assume one is going to be the common and one's going to be the hot so I've got to figure all that out and once I figure it out I'll put a diagram in here you can pause on Okay, I think I found them here. I just went on Amazon's website and found this same part, and they have a little diagram. So basically, uh, what you got is you got your positive, then your negative is catty corner to that, and then it's got the AC here, and the other AC is catty corner to that. Pretty sure it's standard because that's exactly what this one would be once you find the negative and the positive. Anyway, it'd be the same thing. So like that and then these actually it was tucked under it looked like it was going to the AC but it's not it's actually going to your positive and negative clamps so you just follow that out basically the I don't know why I keep saying basically it is <laughs> um, your AC is a category like that like I said so there and then you're gonna hook your you know find the one for mine it's the one with the lettering so that's my positive and then the one without lettering in here is gonna be my negative and I do remember that I didn't have to cut those off and I wished I hadn't cut these off because they had little clamps that would have just been perfect. So now I just got to put some clamps on here and get these butt connectors off of here. And then I should be able to, for this one, just slide them back on there 
Um, it does have a uh, screw hole here, so I might be able to put it in the, uh, just mount it to here, which will give it some additional cooling. So we'll see. All I did for these was I just pinched one side down over these uh, pins. So I just had to get the screwdriver and kind of bend them back up. Hopefully they'll still fit over the clamp there. But, um, yeah, see that one's comes off. Let's get those off. Let's get this off here somehow. how many amps it was but I'm sure that's what's wrong and it may not be maybe the thing's dead I'm not totally sure there's my book connector if I can get that off and just put a rail clamp on it and it'll make it much cleaner of an install. So I have little spade bits on there, or spade clamps, or whatever you call them. There's one. There you go, got them. Oh, we have some around. Let me go find them. Hit pause. Okay, well, it's gonna have to wait till tomorrow because I want to make sure I use spade bits on here or whatever these are called—not spade bits, but spade connectors. And uh, I don't have any the right size, so I'm just gonna wait. But this is how it's gonna hook up. This uh, the one with the letters is positive for me. So that's my positive cable here and then the negative is caddy corner to that so that'll be right here and then I just need to get two connectors for my two AC lines here and then we'll test it out okay I went and got me some of these connectors here and then we couldn't figure it out last night we just hooked it up with some alligator clips to test it and we weren't getting any voltage but uh, figured out that I guess right at the connection of where these were attaching to the clamps uh, must have been broken or something. It looked like the positive one was. Phil took it off and um, it was pretty clean break. So that's probably what it was because we were trying, we even touched the wire right where the connector comes, uh, comes in and we were still getting no voltage. But um, I came out here a little later and right here off of these to uh, blades, it was getting 13 volts. So I knew it was working, it just wasn't going into the clamps. So anyway, I got these off of Amazon one time. Uh, I, I don't remember what I used them for, but basically a pack of 12 of them was cheaper than individual or almost the same price, I don't remember. So I just bought the whole thing and now I've only got like three pair left, I think. <laughs> so uh, they've come in handy. So we're gonna replace those Put these connectors on there and then we'll have us a 10 amp uh, power source. I had to go and remind myself and I remember my video was uh, well, a while back but it was when I was doing the electrolysis. I needed a constant power source for that and most of the smart chargers won't work because there's no battery hooked up so that was one reason why I rigged it up like this so that we could get that um, constant 12 volts for the electrolysis for those pans. Um, so that's what, what the purpose of it was. But this will be nice to have a little power source or if you got an old battery that's really low and you want to put a little charge on it, you can just hook this up and let it go for a while. And I'm usually not one on safety and whatnot, but this is one double, triple check that you've got this unplugged while you're doing this because um, this is coming right off of the transformer and 
it'll ruin your day real quick if you have it plugged in while you're trying to do these wires. Okay, so now let's hook this up. See that or not? Hopefully so. And that should be like There we go. So that's all you gotta do. Get you these rectifiers, bypass your circuit board. Um, they'll be coming off of the back of the transformer and um, you'll have a constant power. It just kind of avoids all of that, you know, voltage and junk uh, sensors up here. I don't know if this gauge will work now because you're not even going towards the, uh, to the circuit board at all. So just remember that you're gonna be on two or 10 amps approximate and it's always going to be putting out power now If we really, really need to, since that's a 50 amp rectifier, it'll actually run on that 50 amp. I wouldn't leave it on there very long because that's the max of that rectifier, um, but we'll just keep it on 10 usually, um, probably even two. Let's see if two works. Should. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good, I guess. I'm not sure if that matters or not, but. It's still above 12 volts, so it should still charge on two amps. It goes slow, right, 12.7, so that'll still charge on two. And then the 10 definitely will work right at 13, which um, what is, I think, a truck or a car is like 13 to 14 when it's putting out on your accessories on the back side for your trailers. So this should work great now for a constant 12 volt power source. Anyway, thanks for watching. Get outside, do something, and we'll catch you in the next video.